Hello and welcome to the Britpart workshop. I'm here in Shropshire at Britpart HQ with Paul Myers, who is Britpart's MD. Paul, how long have you been with the company? I've been with Britpart 15 years out of it. We've uh, company has been trading about 35 years, so uh, I've been here for quite a while. Wow, so 35 years, that means you started in 1982? Yes. Fantastic. On this site? Started locally to here, not on this site, but literally started in a cow shed and moved our way up uh, through a couple of different premises to this site. Wow, it's now absolutely massive, isn't it? It is, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. So, today we're going to be working on this. What, what are we looking at here? Okay, this is the A-frame um, um, off a coil sprung vehicle, mm -hmm. uh, locates a back axle and stops the back axle moving backwards and forwards. Right. Typically, we get a mode of failure where the rubber boot will split let water and dirt into a ball joint, creating too much movement on a ball joint. And there's a lot of movement there, isn't there? What would you hear? Normally you, you hear a clunk on the back axle and it sounds like the whole axle is coming loose, yeah. but a very small amount of this is magnified through the car and because it locates into the axle, it sounds absolutely terrible. Well, that looks pretty mullered to me. Um, what pieces replace which here? Okay, here we've got the replacement uh, fulcrum bracket mm -hmm. and a ball joint. As we can see, the bolts in here have been in a long time. Yeah. They'll be rusted all the way through. Easiest thing to do is cut these bolts off and replace them with new bolts. Right, okay, and that, this kit allows you to do that? We've got everything in the kit, uh, the, the castle washer, um, the split pin and the bolts, everything we need to, uh, to put it back together. Great stuff. And uh, um, what is this here? This is an extra thing here. Uh, this is actually off a of Discovery 2. Okay. Uh, this is a, a more modern uh, solution to the same um, technical solution of how to locate the back axle. Yeah. And this pivots like this. Um, okay. On these, we get a similar mode of failure. Uh, a split in a washer lets in uh, mud, mud, water, mm -hmm. um, creates wear, creates a knocking, and mm -hmm. it needs replacing. Great. And all these kits come from Britpart. You're able to supply them off the shelf? We supply all these off the shelf. Um, these, these ball joints are one of our pop most popular items. I bet they are. Well, look, we're going to go over to the workshop now to see how Steve and Martin get on with fitting this all up. Right, so here we are under the Discovery. We're just unbolting the old A-frame ball joint and bracket from the rear suspension. The unit itself is held to the vehicle in three different ways. The first thing we need to release is this large nut which holds the ball joints taper into the bracket on the top of the axle. This is often extremely tight and because it's been under the car presumably from new, there'll be a lot of corrosion on the split pin, the nut and the thread. So what we're gonna do is chisel the ends off the old split pin, hammer a socket over the top, and then crack the nut off with a breaker bar. And uh, on this particular example, we've actually had to heat up and cool down the thread on the joint because it's that rusty, it just didn't want to let go. But we've finally got it loose. Steve's just finishing winding the nut off, and then he needs to break the taper on the joint where it joins to the axle. From there, two long bolts hold the tape, the bracket, through the arms on the A-frame. And what happens is over time, corrosion builds up on the ends of the bolts, which makes removing the nuts a real nightmare. So what we're gonna do to give ourselves a fighting chance is get in there with a grinder and a cutting disc and cut off the exposed threads on the bolts, which will hopefully allow the nuts to come off a lot easier. When that's done, we'll be able to remove the old bracket and fit the new bracket and the new ball joint. Thank you. Right, so we've got the old A-frame ball joint and bracket off the car now. As you can see, by the lump of bolts still sticking out of it, it was an absolute pain to remove. We actually had to cut through part of the bracket and the bolt in order to remove it. Uh, luckily, the new Brit part item comes with the joint pressed into a new bracket, so it's not really too much of a problem. Um, so that can go on in a few minutes, but just having a look at the, the old joint, there is play evident in it, and also the boot is split, which will be allowing dirt and all sorts of nasty stuff, water, etc., to get into the joint and cause wear. Uh, this is a really important part to having good condition on your Land Rover, otherwise the handling will be all over the place. Here's Fuzz to tell you how important it is. So here we have the A-frame ball joint. Now, this little fella is here to actually keep the rear axle exactly in the correct position without any lateral movement from side to side or any twisting movement backwards and forwards when you're putting on or taking off the power. Now with this one 
is worn, I can just feel a little bit of play here. It's only a tiny bit that I'm feeling, but that transmits into an awful lot when you put it through an axle. So the twist would be noticeable. That would have a knocking sound. And also it means that the lateral position of the axle can change, which means rather like a dog with its back legs trying to overtake its front legs, which would put the vehicle into a crabbing situation, which would mean that the vehicle body would be going along the street like that, kind of sideways. That's exaggerated, of course. But the front axle and rear axle would be actually going along in a line, but one would be further out than the other. It's not a good thing. You get loads of tyre wear. It's dangerous, bad for the vehicle, bad for handling, and it's going to affect your ride an awful lot. This is how the A-frame is situated. This is towards the front of the vehicle, Imagine my shoulders are the outer edges of the A-frame. And here, this pin goes through the rear axle. And if there's any movement here, it will allow lateral movement from side to side. Just a little bit here can amplify into an awful lot at one side or the other. And also, while the vehicle is trying to move away, so the wheels are going around, then it will allow the axle, which is attached directly and solidly to this pin, it will allow it to tip forwards or backwards and that's what we want to avoid that's why if this is worn it needs to be replaced immediately okay so new ball joint is now ready to fit what we're going to do to prevent having the same problem as before we've got a new brit part bulk kit here because obviously we had to cut the old bolts we're going to smear these in copper slip so that if we ever have to remove the joint again hopefully it'll all come apart nice and easily only other thing to note when you're fitting the new joint is that it might be necessary to put a jack under the diff pinion just to level the axle enough for the tapered part of the joint to fit nicely into the axle. Once you've got the castellated nut tight, obviously use the new split pin that came with the kit and make sure you stake the ends over so the nut can't come loose. And that's about it really. So we're going to crack on with that now. Be sure to check out the other Brit Part Workshop videos for more handy tips on how to work on your Land Rover.